Hello lovelies and welcome to the Mojave Desert tutorial. We are going to dive right in by showing you how I prep my cups. So I typically use a 60 grit sanding block and I just go in and really score the surface and make sure that my spray paint has a good surface to adhere to. Once it's scored, I come in with Dawn dish soap, you can just buy it anywhere, and wash it to make sure that I get rid of any oils or anything else that might be left on the surface. I then come in with Apple Green um, by Rust-Oleum 2 Times Spray Paint and just give it a nice coat. I apologize that my son does not have pants on in the background. It just gives you a glimpse into how crazy my life is on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so moving into the glitter, um, I made a custom glit uh, custom mix of glitter. So I started with about 30 milliliters of emerald from the Walmart brand of glitter. I've actually found it's pretty decent stuff, so I couldn't complain. Um, I mixed it with this kind of, it was actually called candy apple um, green that I got off Amazon from a place called Ben's Glitters. I'll link all of them below. But I really liked the color that these two gave me when I mixed them together. So I did the 30 ml of the emerald green and then also another 30 of the Ben's Glitter Apple Green. So it gave me a lot, but you can see that there's still a lot of sparkle and it was going to be perfect for the cacti that I'm going to be adding to the cup. For all of my tumblers, I use a little extra epoxy. Um, I actually almost gave up cups a couple of years ago um, because I just could not get the coverage I wanted out of epoxy. I've switched over to um, a little extra and I'm never going back. I will not use anything else. But side note, side discussion, I apologize. But to apply my glitter, I went in using the epoxy method. Um, as you can see here, this is a 30 ounce um, stainless tumbler from Craft Haven. Um, I was able to put less than two milliliters of epoxy on this cup and you can see I just got amazing coverage. So after I was able to get a full even coat of that epoxy on the cup, I came in and I just sprinkled the glitter all over the surface to get that even coverage. You'll see that I go back and forth, like I'll it run out of glitter pretty quickly and that's just because since it is a custom mix and I don't have a need to make a bunch of extra cups right now, I just mixed up enough glitter that would allow me to be successful on this cup. So one thing I highly recommend using this method is you'll see that I have my pair of scissors over there on the side and I actually learned this from Jessica Flynn so I cannot take credit. But in between applying the glitter and when like you're in a resting spot, take those scissors and knock off the excess glitter because it's really just going to help um, when you go into the next step of applying epoxy, make it to where you don't have a bunch of glitter lifting or anything else or weird things mixing into it. It just gets all the extra off and allows you to just have a lot more successful next step. So here I just finished applying the glitter, um, just making sure to get it up by the rim because I mean sometimes it's just hard to get it at, like everywhere you needed to, but I was able to get really good coverage with this. So I mixed up another 30 ml of a little extra epoxy um, and I started into the next epoxy later, layer after I waited probably about two to three hours for that um, epoxy method glitter to dry. So I came in, added the epoxy, and then let that dry, and then I came in probably about four hours later and applied a second layer of epoxy, just to make sure that I had that really smooth surface to go into. So I have this SVG file for the cactus. Um, I'll have it linked below that you guys can purchase in my Etsy shop. But pretty much what I um, set it up to do is that you will have both the um, offset which is the green color that you see on the screen and then also the peekaboo part of it which is the pink color ready to apply to your tumbler. So um, what you'll do is you will cut out both um, the offset and the peekaboo at the same time. I cannot stress this enough so that you make sure that you have the exact size that you need. Um, and then that way you can come through and make sure that your offset matches whatever your peekaboo is. I use um, stencil vinyl from Oracle. I will link it below. Um, for every peekaboo that I've done, this stuff is the bomb. Like, I cannot stress it enough. It is actually absolutely amazing. I learned about it from DMD um, Designs, which if you have not checked her stuff out, oh my goodness, you need to go look, watch her tutorials. She's just amazing. So, 
Um, but yeah, I used the uh, peekaboo file that you see, which was like that pink, and I came through and just applied it piece by piece to the tumbler, rotating it ever so um, often just to get the right spacing. You could apply these all at once, but for me, I was more successful just taking them off cacti by cacti or cactus by cactus and applying them to the cup. So here I'm placing my last one that has like the really cute little succulent um, that I really liked. Um, just making sure that it's applied well to the cup. Now, you will see here that there was some other stuff spray painted on the cup. This is definitely shot out of order because this cup was definitely a learning, learning um, opportunity for myself. So to start with the sky, you're gonna come in with the yellow um, and I will link all of the colors down um, in the description, but I came in with the yellow first and I started by adding that right at the place where I'd like the sunset to start. So I came in with that. Then I came in with the Rustoleum um, 2X Coral and added that right on top of the yellow. After that, I came in with a pink prickly pear and added that like right onto, um, right over on top of the coral and before the purple. So with these, I can't stress it enough. Like, do not, don't worry. It's gonna work out. It's going to be fine. And just don't be afraid to go over colors multiple times to get that perfect ombre. Like here you can see that my yellow is pretty much non-existent. But then I come in and just go over and add it back in again to just give that pop. And actually, my nozzle was a little bit clogged. And again, my kid does not have pants on. I swear he wears them. Like, I don't know. It just, <laughs> in my videos, he doesn't. Um, and he, it, I know he looks like he's right under the spray paint, but he's actually pretty far away. So he's fine. I promise. He's two. He's, he's, he's growing. He's a great kid. Um, but yeah, the yellow spray paint added some really nice little speckle touches to um, the sky that I just thought was an amazing detail um, and I kind of just left out. So again, this is shot out of order because um, I learned some very valuable lessons on this cup. But here what we're doing is we are going to be creating the outline for our mountains. So we created this amazing sunset with the four other spray paint colors. So um, after that, you're going to want those to completely dry, like absolutely completely dry. I would say at least 24 hours. And then you're, I use two pieces of the pretty thick blue tape, um, just the normal pa painter's tape would work. And then I came in with my X-Acto knife and you can see I just roughly cut different mountain outlines. So just, just roughly just went up and down um, to get the pattern of the mountains that I wanted. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I had to do this process twice because I did remove the wrong part of the tape for the mountains. Like I removed the top instead of the bottom. Um, but yeah, you're just gonna come through and remove the tape to create the outlines for um, your mountains. And then one thing you wanna be sure to check when you're doing this is if you're using a super sharp X-Acto knife, which I recommend, make sure you don't take the stencil of the cacti off with you because you're not gonna get it back. I took this outside, saran, um, saran wrap the top, and then I used two different colors for the mountains. I started with a navy blue, and I will link the links down below, and then a slate blue over the top of it. I sprayed the navy blue in the tops of the mountains and then came in with that slate blue just to blend it and make it just have that really nice sunset view. After I let those mountains dry, and again, you want to let them dry at least 12 hours. I mean, just do yourself a favor let them dry the full hour or two or full 12 hours or you're just gonna be crying later um, <laughs> there's my two-year-old again um, and then I came in and I added another thick layer of the blue tape exact same process that I did for the mountains but I just did a rough um, cut for the ground when doing this because I learned this again the hard way you want to make sure that you're taking note where the bottom of the stencil of your cacti are so that you don't have some space cacti floating out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so you want to know where you put your cacti and make sure that they are touching the ground so that you're not just like what the heck's going on there. I let the bottom of my cup dry for again a good six hours and then I finally got to the part that I've been like dying to see the entire time I've been working on this cup. And I went in and removed the stencil vinyl. Now, again, since we used the stencil vinyl this time, and not like the Oracle 651, or I think it's the 631, which is like the removable stuff, um, this process was so much easier. 
you have to think that you're gonna have a ton of layers of spray paint. You're gonna have um, just like all the different design elements that uh, that are on top of that stencil there. So this stencil vinyl really comes off nicely and I just cannot say enough about it because it made this process a lot easier than when I've done peekaboos in the past. You're going to want to take your time with this because there are a lot of little pieces as you can see. Um, but I think this is probably the most satisfying part of this cup because you get to see how it is all coming together. Um, one thing I did want to note while we're looking at this is I know we use the yellow spray paint in the um, ombre effect for making the sky, but um, it, the mountains covered it up. But that's okay. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just wanted to give the appearance of the sun setting behind the mountains, and if it worked that the yellow wasn't quite showing up, that's fine. So, again, um, just because we have so many layers on the cup, so you've got the glitter, you've got the epoxy, you've got the spray paint. I used my Dremel to sand the edge of the cup. I just really wanted to make sure that we got that little rim of stainless steel um, peeking through so that the next layers of epoxy could really, really attach themselves nicely. Um, I also came through, um, I sanded on top of that with just like this, this sanding block as well to get the bottom and then the rims just so it's soft and we had a really nice layer, um, smooth layer for the epoxy to add on to um, and cover everything up. So just sanded the bottom and the top and got any rough spots out. Now this, I, just, I can't say enough. It's not as hard as it looks. But it's rough. It's it's not fun. Um, I designed <laughs> this offset to have a little bit of uh, wiggle room in it because I made sure that the stencils gave a little um, room for air when applying the offset. But it was still, when you add the layers of epoxy and everything, it's still not perfect. But you know what? In art, like Sandy's Organized Chaos says all the time, there are no wrongs. So, Take your time, apply the vinyl um, in the manner that you think works for you, and it'll be beautiful regardless of what your comfort level is with this stuff. Because I will tell you, vinyl and I have a very, very unique relationship. It's getting better, and I'm trying, but <laughs> don't think that you need to be a vinyl expert at all to try this tutorial, because it went really, really well. Um, so here you can see, I'm just taking my time applying the, um, like the opal, the green opal to the um, cacti to make sure that I'm really making that green glitter pop. So you do not have to do this stuff. You could finish right here or you could do this. I just liked the way that the um, stars looked on it. You could absolutely leave it like this. But I took a little ball tool, which these are so underestimated. If you are in the Tumblr world, I highly recommend getting a set of these. But I just got some simple like acrylic paint from Michaels. I got a set of them. I think I got like 24 or 36 and a set for like $13. They were in clearance or whatever. But, and I'll link them down below. But yeah, I just got some white paint and just use the ball tool to touch little spots to make the stars. And if you make, as you can see right here, I, I wasn't happy with a couple of the stars. Feel free just to wipe them off. And if there's any kind of paint residue left over, all you have to do is get a Q-tip and some alcohol and it literally comes right off. So don't worry, you can't mess them up. Um, they come right off, especially because you have that layer of epoxy underneath there that really makes it smooth, smoothly come off. So decided I needed some more light. <laughs> so I turned on a, um, my desk lamp. Who knew that that's something that would be useful um, in a cup tutorial, but it worked. So I wrapped up here putting the stars on and then um, I really didn't want to go for a perfect moon. So I could have easily cut one out of um, white vinyl and just made it awesome. But I wanted more of like the hand, hand painted look. So I had a funnel. I cut the little extra piece off the funnel to make more of a perfect, perfect circle. And then you'll see here that I just dip it into the paint. I then take that funnel and just roll it onto the cup, almost as like a little guide, but knowing that it's not gonna be perfect because I do want that hand-painted look. So I come in with um, just a cheap paintbrush. I think this one was from Walmart. It was like one of those pack of 100 paintbrushes for $2, and I was like, I'm all about that. 
Um, so I came in and just hand painted the moon. So it looks like you have like the little craters and the rough surface and texture that we see in the, on the moon every night. So if you wanted to do the vinyl, by all means, just cut out a simple circle and it would look absolutely beautiful that way as well. I just wanted to try this method. So one thing I highly, highly would like to um, share, it's a tip that I learned the hard way, is that acrylic paint loves to suck up epoxy. Not just a little, um, not just like marginally, no, like they, it, it loves itself some epoxy. So I came in with Quick Coat um, from CC DIY, and again, I'll link that down in the description to not only seal um, my opal vinyls that I have um, here, but also seal in the acrylic paint so that I didn't get any dips in my epoxy or have um, like big divots um, where the moon is because I've had that happen before. Ask me how I know. So um, came in with the CC DIY, did a really good coverage um, of that just because this stuff is so amazing. If you don't have it, I highly recommend it because it keeps your vinyl from lifting it seals in your acrylic paint so that it doesn't absorb your epoxy. And actually I found, and it claims this on the bottle, like who knew, um, it makes your epoxy go on easier for the next coat. So highly recommend this stuff. You can also use polyurethane. It does the exact same thing. Um, I was just kind of a sucker and fell for the marketing of CC DIY. So <laughs> anyway, I mixed up 30 mLs of a little extra epoxy to kind of, to seal this all in and really just, um, spend some time making sure that everything's nice and covered. We have that excellent shine um, that shows off all of our work and this really just came together. It was really simple. I love this epoxy because I don't get micro bubbles. Like hold the phone. Seriously, I can put this stuff on spray paint and I don't know if any of you have ever tried that, but yeah, no micro, like, yeah, you can torch it if you want to. I really didn't need to, but it's kind of a habit and old habits die hard. Um, but just applied the epoxy and this was done. It didn't need a second coat. But oh my goodness, look at those colors. Um, so it was definitely a fun. Thank you for watching. And if you'd like, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future tutorials. And I love you guys. Bye. Thank you.